If you need to hire, you need Indeed. Indeed is your matching and hiring platform with over 350 million global monthly visitors according to Indeed data and a matching engine that helps you find quality candidates fast. And Indeed doesn't just help you hire faster. 93% of employers agree Indeed delivers the highest quality matches compared to other job sites according to a recent Indeed survey. With Indeed, everything hiring is all in one place and it makes it so easy. Leveraging over 140 million qualifications and preferences each each day, Indeed's matching engine is constantly learning from your preferences. The more you use Indeed, the better it gets. Join the more than 3.5 million businesses worldwide that use Indeed to hire great talent fast. And listeners of this show will get a $75 sponsored job credit to get your jobs more visibility at Indeed.com slash podcast. Just go to Indeed.com slash podcast right now and support our show by saying you heard about Indeed on this podcast. Terms and conditions apply. Indeed.com slash podcast. Need to hire? You need Indeed. Hello, Hello, everyone, everyone in podcast listening land. I'm Karen Devaney. And I'm Ann Barner. And, and we're, we're sisters. sisters. Welcome to Sugarcoated Murder, where we'll discuss... And probably inappropriately laugh about and comment on... Yep, one of our favorite subjects. Murder. murder. Oh, and we love to bake. And why not combine our two favorite subjects? Baking and killers. It's I'm been a, a while. I know. I'm the one-handed bandit sitting in your, standing in your kitchen. I know, but you're doing so well. I am doing a lot better than I was a week ago. You and are. even better than a week before that. Indeed. So, every day is a challenge to meet, and it's, <laughs> and it's met. I know you'll be so happy when you don't have to wear your sling anymore, or yeah. your wedge. Well, the first thing that's going to go is this abductor. <laughs> it's called an abductor abduction abdu- I feel like it's an abductor right but it's an abductor immobilizer it's something. abducting your it's freedom. abducting all of my freedom and more than half of my wits right <laughs> <laughs> so my wits are about to go they're going like I'm having nightly pep talks that I have to get from my husband that I can face the next day yes or just face the night I think my <laughs> biggest thing is my biggest challenge is facing the night right and then getting through the night because so. you still can't sleep in a bed I'm still not in a bed, and when I said something to the physician's assistant that I went to earlier this week, he said that is completely normal. What really made me gasp is that he said some people it takes six months. <gasps> See how you did? <laughs> and I said that won't be me. No. And six months. Six months that they sleep in a chair. Wow. Yeah. No. And I'm not doing it. What if you can't? What if you don't have a chair, a recliner? I don't know what people do. I don't know if they camp out on their couch. I don't know how yeah. people do it. Oh my gosh! So, wow. Yeah. Yeah, and we're still we're still adjusting to the bidet. There's still oh. some bidet shenanigans. So I will say this: we've come a long way yeah. with the bidet. <laughs> Thank you. But there are some mishaps and slip ups <laughs> and things that still are we're working on. And I still don't use the bidet. I. If I use that bathroom, I do the old-fashioned way. And that's completely fine. Um, my biggest challenge or my biggest concern right now is that we are going away for Thanksgiving. Oh, no. And right. that we are renting a house right. that I know doesn't have a bidet. Right. And I am having to figure out, because the bidet that we bought is not portable, So I'm having to figure out some workarounds and things. Oh, my God. I've got the perfect plan for you. Are you ready? I think they have a hose out back. So that or you do your business, Uh wrap a towel around your waist, Uh waddle on down to that ocean, girl, Uh and clean off the way Mother Nature intended. Okay. But here's (laughs) an issue with that. A, the beach is across the street. (laughs) Not a problem yet. B, I can't get my sling wet. So I can't go in the ocean with this apparatus. No, no, no. You only need to get your behind wet. So well, just there are waves. I might squat. get. I might get knocked over. Squat. You're good. I really, honestly, I just need to put my butt into the wave as it's and coming it and breaking crash. and letting it break on my butt. <laughs> Do a butt crack. Yeah, into my butt crack. That's right. <laughs> 
see how I'm concerned? <laughs> see how this would be a concern? Yeah, it's a challenge. So anyway, I was talking to and my... And I think it's probably something that a lot of people don't even think about when they go to have the surgery. Well, so, is how am I going to clean my behind? Well, you're right. And I told the PA, it doesn't matter what you say. There's no way that you can prepare people for this. Right. But my um, physical therapist lady, right. her name is Bethany, and she's so patient with me, even though she does hurt me and almost make me cry, and then she knows, and then she just still does it anyway. But she said that when I'm all done with this, I should write a blog. Oh, yeah. And post it, and then print it out and give it to my surgeon's yes, office. definitely. To say, these are the things that I find people need to know up front. Yeah, because if your arms are a little shorter... You don't have a long stretch. It's not easy no, to No, and I was take born care with, of business. with T-Rex arms. <laughs> so I'm already at a disadvantage on a normal day. Take away my, probably the longer of my two arms and the <laughs> one that is the dominant one, and I'm having an issue. Yeah. So, and you know, there are just other things that, you know, when I originally talked to him, I said, I need to know what kind of help I need to get in and for people to help me. And he was like, well, usually the first week you're on pain medicine. So you probably should have somebody around while you're on pain medicine. And left it at that. Oh, wow. And I, I mean, what if you lived out of town and I sent you home? <laughs> I would still be sitting on the potty. Maybe. I don't know what I would do. I don't either. So, you know, there's things that I think, and especially because they're men, and I don't think men think things through like women do. Right. Yeah. No, they don't. So I, I just feel like that when this is over, I might, I might even start a support group <laughs> because it's been, it's definitely, it's a physical challenge, but it is a mental game. Yeah. It is a mental game. So right. anyway, enough of that. Enough. Well, the good right. news is you're on the mend. I am on the mend. And this isn't a forever thing. It's temp it's temporary. This is a temporary and situation. We're lucky that we live so close to each other and we both are working from home now. So it's very So amazing. lucky. So blessed. And I've got a great surgeon and a great surgeon's team and a great physical therapist. And I think that everybody is working together and I've made it perfectly clear to anybody that will listen. If there's anything that I can do to jump ahead three spaces, let me know. I'll do it. Right. Yeah. Whether it's paying money or going to the physical therapy seven days a week, like tell me what to do. Right. But they all say, well, it's a process and in a year you'll be so glad you did it. Yeah. I'm like, okay. That's a long time from now. <laughs> so anyway, it's fine. We're oh, doing good. We're doing the best we can. So today I'm in your kitchen. I know. And it's going to be pretty funny because I'm going to cook left-handed. Yeah. I think you can do it. But I just want to say thank you to Annie because she pre-measured my stuff for well, me. Yeah. And that's pretty much probably because she doesn't want the mess that it would be like if I'm measuring flour. When I measure flour on a good day, I'm messy. If I'm doing it yeah. just with my left hand. Well, I just didn't think there needed to be a lot of frustration involved for your cooking. It just shouldn't be a struggle. You know, you're going to get some good independence and you're going to feel good about it. I think I'm going to feel kitchen, like I've done something big. I didn't want to set you up for failure. Thank you. I so appreciate that. <laughs> so, so today, What are you going to make? Well, I'm going to make these... Really delicate muffins. They're called Grandma's Honey Muffins. They're not from our oh, grandma. No. But it's a taste of home recipe, and I do love a taste oh, of home. Oh, yeah. They've got good ones. Yeah, they've got really good ones. I think that um, taste of home is like, it's like a group of Paula Deans. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's like it a is. Paula Dean I remember community. when you used to get their magazines. Yes. And the funnest thing was they always hit a carrot somewhere yes. in the magazine. Yes. And had to find the carrot. You had to find the carrot. That was always so fun. <laughs> so I do miss getting Taste of Home because I loved it. But it's very bad for me because I love to bake all the stuff in it. And yeah. And then eat it. Right. So, right. so this is a Taste of Home recipe. I've, I've, I've made them a lot. I've made them through the years. Um, a lot of times I will put blueberries in this. Oh, okay. And when I do, I use the I use the Wyman's wild Maine blueberries that are frozen. Yeah. Because for like, here, I mean, South Carolina, we have a blueberry season, but our blueberries aren't nearly as sweet as some that you get in the northern states. And the states. wild blueberries are the little teeny ones, right. which I really like in muffins mm -hmm. anyway. And what I also do is I dust them with a little bit of flour before mm -hmm. I put them in my recipe. Yeah. Because then they don't sink to the bottom yeah. of your muffin. But today, I'm actually not using the blueberries. I'm just doing the honey. Just the honey muffins. muffins. And the honey, honey muffin, to honey. me, it's very good because it's buttery and it's got honey in it. 
but you can also almost use it as a almost like a you know how sometimes when you do cornbread on the side and it's a sweet oh, right. cornbread, mm -hmm. so you could use this almost as a sweet dinner roll. Oh, nice! Or a breakfast muffin. Oh, I can't wait one. to try it. So yeah, it's Very really yummy. Good. So um, the first thing I'm going to do is I've got Annie put together my dry ingredients. And this is a really basic recipe, by the way. There's nothing weird in it. There's nothing that you wouldn't already have in your cabinet, probably. So it's flour, sugar, baking powder. And salt are my dry ingredients. So baking powder, not baking soda. Exactly. That's important to really Very read important. that recipe. And to know the difference. Yeah. And then the wet ingredients are an egg, a cup of 2% milk. Um, you melt a fourth of a cup of butter and you do a fourth of a cup of honey, which we are using honey from a farmer Katie's farm Is it a fourth today. of a cup of honey? Yeah. Oh, shoot. What did you do? I did that. I did a half a cup of honey. Well, it's going to be awful honey. It is. I'm terribly sorry. It's okay. I like honey. I love I love honey. So <laughs> this is not going to bother me. Plus, I, I especially love Farmer Katie's honey. I've not met a honey that I didn't love, but I have not met one that I love more. I than... know, but now our wet ingredients are going to be a little bit more than our dry. So yeah. look at the consistency. If we need to do something about it, just let me know. Okay, that's fine. So, um... So I'll be piddling along in the kitchen, and while I'm doing that, what will you be oh, doing? Oh, I'm going to talk about a murder. And yeah. it's so funny. I have, I've been having a hard time lately trying to come up with where to even start to look for my murders. You know, yeah. it's hard. If, if you ever get involved in a podcast out there... And you're doing this type of... I can hear Trout. Uh, like, you can hear him? Because I can hear him. Yeah. He's having a little meltdown right now. but And he's he's going through an adjustment because he's used to me being home all day. And I'm not home all day now. So I come home very quickly and leave. Trout, honey, you're good. Will he eat a treat? He will eat a treat. Like one of these special treats? Sure. Come you here, can. Trout. Well, he's scared of the force, and you have to throw it at him. I will. Or not at him, or to him. You might have a hard time. I got it. Okay. Anyway, I, I just really had a, a hard time. So. Yeah, you get writer's block out. sometimes. You do, and it's, there are just so many, and it's like, okay, where do I start? And how, so I was like, okay, well, I haven't done a murder in Vermont. So I was like, I I'm going to try. Have we, have either of us done No, that? and here's why. Vermont uh, has a really, oh, really low true. crime rate. Yes, I think right. that I think that we realized that before. Right. So yeah. they had three murders listed in Murderpedia, but none of them like jumped out at me as oh, that's kind of interesting. Yeah. So then that same day, I had like a huge craving for hot chocolate. I yeah. thought, oh my gosh, I'm gonna just try and see what happens when I type in hot chocolate murder. Oh. You don't know. You don't know. Man, I could murder some hot chocolate yes. right now. I'm well, you. interestingly enough, there's a game called Assassin's Creed. Yeah. Okay. Well, they have a, a game in that game mm -hmm. that's um, where you you work a hot chocolate murder. No so everything way. everything came up with Assassin's Creed hot chocolate murder. I was like, well, dang. That's, <laughs> that's so not going to work. So then I went back to Murderpedia, and I was like, well, maybe Utah. I don't know. I couldn't find Utah, and somehow I ended up back in Idaho. Oh, no. So that's where I found the story. <laughs> so we're crazy. still, we still don't know a Vermont murder. So if we, and if we have any listeners, which I know we have listeners in Vermont. Yeah. So if you're listening and you're in Vermont and you know of a great famous murder right. that we don't know about or that maybe is not on Wikipedia or Murderpedia, but is something that happened either in your hometown or your county or something that, you know, yeah, you've heard about, know. let us know and we'll research and do it. We try to cover all the states, but some states just don't have long murders. Do, I find myself constantly going through that song, 50 Nifty United States, <laughs> and I get you know, 50, Utah, 50, Vermont, 50, yeah. Virginia, Washington, West Virginia, yeah. Wisconsin, Wyoming. Go, girl. You go. I, I know. I, I don't know it. I mean, I know, I, I know I'm supposed to know it, yeah. but I just know the 50 Nifty part. I don't know. I really enjoyed that in, in I guess that was middle school, maybe Probably. when we did that. So I anyway, it might have been elementary. I'm Idaho this week. You know how, all right. You know. Especially because as I was scanning through, this guy's picture came up, and we'll post a picture of him because he's gnarly looking. I thought, okay, we're going to talk about you. So I'm going to tell you the story of Mr. Paul Ezra Rhodes. Okay. From Idaho. We're going to start out with his victims. 
Okay. Please excuse Trout. I, he really is having a meltdown. But yes. um, I get it. He's, he's had some medication. Nothing like you know bad for him. He's got some quiet. It's all moments, natural. Quiet moments, melatonin type medication for dogs. And but it has to kick in. This has to kick in. So yeah, we'll, we'll get there. Okay. Anyway. February 28, 1987, 21-year-old Stacy Baldwin was working the night shift at the Red Mini Barn Convenience Store in Blackfoot, Idaho. Blackfoot, Idaho. Blackfoot, Blackfoot, Idaho. Hey, Blackfoot, Idaho. Which is very close to Cedar Rapids. Okay. She loved her job at the Red Mini Barn. She, um, just after midnight, a group of her friends... Uh -huh. wanted to go out. They wanted to rent some movies. They were going to go hang out with Stacy for a little bit. So they're on their way. They get there. And as they're pulling into the parking lot, uh -huh. a truck comes barreling towards them, almost hits them. And they're so pissed that they are thinking, okay, I'm pretty sure that was a drunk driver. Mm. And they go inside expecting to see Stacy behind the counter. But she wasn't there. Oh. And they look all over the place. No Stacy. Oh, Nowhere. God. Her purse is there, but there was no Stacy. So her friends called the police immediately and said, Hey, listen, we've got a situation. Police come to the Red Mini Barn store and um, they look through. They can tell that the last transaction at the store was just after midnight, so right before her friends got there. Okay. And that there's $200 missing from the register. Oh. Her friends then tell the police about the truck that they saw. They describe the driver as a heavy set man with long dark hair. Stacy's car was still in the parking lot, so police suspected that Stacy has been kidnapped. Oh, wow. A friend of Stacy's family the next day or not the next day. Yeah, I mean, because it was daylight, you know, by the time the police were Oh, yeah, because it was midnight when they... when. So the police yeah. are out looking, but there was also a dentist friend of the family that started going out and looking around to see if they could find any, any sight of where she could possibly be. And as he's driving along his route, he comes across two dumpsters, and he drives past the dumpsters, dumpsters and he sees a body in the snow oh shit so he gets out of his car runs over and it's stacy's blood-soaked body <sighs> um thrown behind dumpsters laying in the snow oh listen can i just say can i just make a statement yes humans are not meant to be thrown aside next to underneath or inside of a dumpster huh completely agree. The only thing that is supposed to go in a dumpster is trash. Right. And God did not make humans trash. Now, we have some trashy humans. We do, but still. That do some nasty things. Yes. But God did not mean for his beings, even animals, right. do not belong in the dumpster. That is correct. Okay. That is correct. Just want to make that statement. Yeah. So, Stacy had been shot multiple times. Police come out. They mark the crime scene, but they're pressed for time. Sorry, that's okay. They're pressed for time because it's winter time in Idaho, and mm. there's snow on the ground. Mm. And as the sun continues to come up, the snow begins to melt. And when the snow melts, their crime scene melts. Yeah. So Evidence. they're they're really kind of rushing around. They do find some tire tracks um, from a truck. And two sets of shoe prints in the snow. Um, they were boots. Mm -hmm. They also find two shell casings from a 38 caliber caliber revolver and a long dark hair. Now, a long dark hair. A 38 caliber caliber revolver mm -hmm. doesn't have a. It's not like a shotgun where your shell casings drop out, right? Once you're done firing your weapon and you've spent your your bullets in the revolver, you have to open it and dump the shell casings out and then reload the gun. I had no idea. So um, that's what this guy had done. He had obviously fired until he was done, emptied the casings, reloaded, and continued to fire. So that's why the, the shell casings were there. Stacy's hair was light in color, so oh. they knew that this long, dark hair did not belong to her. Yeah. I'm going to have to pick this dog up. 
Yep, you are. Oh my goodness. So we're so, going to have to put him on the porch. Yeah. Which is against the rules of our apartment complex. So. I know. Well, so Stacy's wounds were not wounds that would be immediately fatal. Oh. So they knew. Please hold. I'm picking up the dog. Oh, my goodness. So they knew that um, Stacy had been left to freeze to death and die in the snow, which is just ridiculous. I mean, it's bad enough it. that they shot her and right. put her beside a dumpster, and now she's got to lay next to that dumpster as she's dying and smell the nasty dumpster. Right. And think, my life has become nothing but a piece of trash. I know. I know. I don't like it. Um, so police investigate some potential suspects, but nothing ever comes of any of those. Everybody's got an alibi or they don't match, mm -hmm. you know, with the long hair or whatever. So they had no, they really didn't have a clue, but they continued to investigate. 16 days after Stacy was murdered, 23-year-old mm -hmm. Nolan Haddon, and my gosh, if somebody from Idaho is out there and I'm pronouncing these names wrong, I am sincerely sorry. Yeah, because you know what? We're just a couple of broads. We don't know how to... Just a couple of broads we don't know trying how to, to do a podcast, things. for heaven's sake. We just don't know how to pronounce things. No, I got the first name, Nolan. Last name, Haddon. It, it could be... Hayden. It's Hayden. But how anyway, H A D D O N. Okay, well, it sounds like to me Haddon. Yeah. And if it's not, then they should have spelled it a different way. Okay, so he's working um, uh, evening shift at a convenience store in Idaho Falls. Mm -hmm. He, uh, no one was going to school to be a radiation technician. Oh, that's a good career. The job at the convenience store was something that just gave him some, some spending money that he really wanted. Mm -hmm. And he enjoyed it. He was friendly with the customers. Um, he, he was in his final semester of school. Okay. Um, his brother actually stopped by the store. He was out and about. His brother stopped by the store around 1030 that night, mm -hmm. grabbed a drink, and, you know, they chatted a little bit, and his brother went home. Okay. Six o'clock the next morning, the morning shift girl gets into work. Now, I don't believe this was a 24-hour convenience store. Okay, so I believe it, it probably, get closed it around closed, the night or so. Yeah, and then she opened it up at 6 a.m. Okay. Because when she got there, she was really surprised that the door was unlocked. Oh, gosh. Yeah. So she opens the door and walks in, and she's looking around for Hayden, and she notices the phone is off the hook. Uh-oh. And the register is open. Oh, no. And um, then she happens to spot some bloody footprints on the floor. Oh, and at gosh. that point, she calls her boss, yeah. the owner. The owner, he and must said, have, I'm not cleaning that up. Right. Well, I mean, personally, I would have probably been like, police. police. Right. But for whatever reason, she okay. called him. I think so they could further investigate at that point. Yeah. But so he comes in, they go, they're looking, and they follow these bloody footprints to the cooler. Oh, they walk God. into the cooler, and there's Nolan in a pool of blood in the cooler. Oh, no. So the owner, But he has a pulse. Okay. So the owner tells the lady, go call 911. Oh, now we're going to call 911. Right. He had been shot several times, and he was suffering from hypothermia. So police come in. They do their investigation. Um, Nolan is rushed off to the hospital and gone and put into... Um, Surgery immediately rushed into surgery. Okay. The police find that there are two packs of cigarettes are missing, um, a bunch of lighters, and $116 in cash. Oh. That's it. So, whoever it is that's doing this, they're not out for the money. No, they're, they're out not. For the thrill of the kill. Yeah. Police find five bullet holes in the freezer oh. and 38 caliber shell casings. Um, um, four. Right. Got ourselves a problem. There were no security cameras and there were no witnesses. So um, police take the shell casings because Idaho Falls and Blackfoot are very close in proximity. Uh -huh. They know that they had this other killing at a convenience store. Yeah. So they take the shell casings from each mur each. Um, shooting mm -hmm. and compare them. them they're exactly the same oh my gosh they match. So we have a serial yes um convenience store killer right 
Stacy's autopsy had revealed that she had been raped. So police were kind of surprised that no one had been targeted. Because he's because not a he's guy. Not, right. He's I mean, not a woman. he's not a woman. He's a guy. Right. But they looked into it a little bit further, and no one had actually switched shifts with a woman oh. that normally worked that evening shift. You know what? That woman probably got immediate ass pucker. Yeah, maybe. Because she was like, holy crap, that was supposed to be me. Right. Exactly. Oh my gosh. So, um, she switched shifts, so it, Nolan wasn't even supposed to be there, which is completely insane to me to even yeah. consider. So, and that also means that if this killer was casing the joint, waiting for the woman, you know, he could have left and come back at another time. Yeah. Continue to case the joint, but he didn't. He walked in and just committed a senseless shooting of poor Nolan. Oh, God. Who, you know what? I think I might need to, I'm going to pause real quick and. Um, I can do it myself. No, no. I need to move the oven uh, rack down. Yeah. I think it's up too high. That so, is what I cannot Sorry, do. folks. Going on pause. <laughs> okay, I'm back. Sorry. So, <sighs> um, Nolan. We were talking about Nolan. Senseless killing. They could have, they could have, whoever this is could have spared his life for sure. Because, again, when Nolan was shot, he didn't, he was not hit in any kind of a kill spot. Nothing that would have killed him. But you said that was the same thing for the first girl. Exactly. And which I think is maybe something that, that's a pattern. I think they like the suffering because then to put him in yeah, a freezer. Because he had hypothermia. Right. So, so I think that this person likes the suffering. I think they're not intending to I agree. instantly kill. I which is agree. pretty damn sick. I yeah. mean, it's sick on top of sick. So no one takes a turn for the worse, unfortunately, and oh, passes away. Or no one his, body. I know. His cause of death was hypothermia and blood loss. Due to murder. Exactly. Thank you. Um, senseless. Just completely. Anyway, he could have easily been saved. If the guy hadn't put him in the cooler, he probably would have survived. Yeah. So. That's just mean. Right. That's mean-spirited. The good news is. There was a hair sample. There was another long oh. hair that they found. So they've got a hair sample. They've got the boot imprints from the bloody feet prints. Okay. They've got the shell case casings, and they have a vague description of a man, a man in his truck, um, okay. from Stacy's crime scene. Okay. So the two of them are matching up pretty well. They're they're fairly certain they've got they've got a problem. So on March 19th, Nolan is laid to rest. Hmm. A husband calls 911 that day to say that his wife, 34-year-old Susan, I believe her last name is Mickelbacher, but um, I could be wrong. So if I've messed that up, again, I'm terribly sorry. She had gone to the school where she, was, she worked as a special education teacher to drop off a lesson plan because she wasn't feeling well that day and she yeah. was going to take the day off. And back in 1987, you couldn't just email your lesson no, you plan. Couldn't. You had to go into the school. Yeah. Her husband told the 911 operator that she'd never come home and he couldn't find her anywhere. So police pulled out a notification and they put her picture on TV. Yeah. And several calls start coming in to say they had seen Susan at a grocery store parking lot. Okay. But nobody had seen her since. In less than 24 hours, they find Susan's van that has been abandoned on the side of the road in Idaho Falls. Okay. They go into the van. They find long, dark hairs in her van. Um, Susan had short hair, by the way. Okay. They find her checkbook. They can see that she has written several checks for cash. Oh. Um, altogether, they totaled $2,000. Susan had been to several banks and cashed the checks. There were receipts for that in the car. Investigators go through that van with a fine tooth comb. Good. And this one investigator, brilliant, absolutely brilliant, notices a certain kind of grass stuck underneath the one of the front tires mm -hmm. of the van 
and he says, we don't have that kind of grass on the side of town. Oh, well, he's a smart boy. That's right. And it's, it's a certain kind of grass that I guess grows in the desert, which I don't understand because I didn't think. Yeah, there are grasses that grow in the no, desert. No, no, I didn't think Idaho had desert, but maybe. I didn't realize it snowed in the desert either. Yeah. But that's just me being ignorant, I suppose. Yeah, I didn't know that we had deserts so, in Idaho, but I'm, I'm a dummy. <laughs> Me too. I don't know. I don't know. Out of I don't know. It's shameful. It's just shameful. To me, it looked more instead of desert. When I saw pictures of it, it, it looked more like prairie to me. Okay, that's but and, um, yeah, whatever. So it, it's on the western part of town, not where they were. Okay. West of them is where they had those those types of grasses. Okay. So I thought, all right, let's go that way and see if we can figure out where this. Where this, where this happened, and if we can find Susan, you yeah. know, because we don't know if she's dead, she could be alive somewhere. You she know, could be. so they start out again. Remember, it's winter, yeah, and I know, snow on the ground. As they're driving down this road, they can see a field with a long fence that runs along the road, and then there comes a point where there are tire tracks in the snow, and somebody's busted through the fence, and they, they get off the road and they follow. Yeah. Start to follow the, the tire tracks and then they stop because they want to get out and walk it by foot in case there's any kind evidence. of evidence. Yeah. The first thing they come across are some papers from school, from <gasps> Susan's class. Oh my gosh. I know. Very, that's not, this is not good, but we don't know. They could get there and they could stop. They keep on going. I feel and like they you are, know. I, I feel do. like you know. I like, know. The suspense has got to be killing you. I mean, the suspense is killing me, but I just know that you know. So I don't know. say we don't know. We don't know. I we don't know. know. I don't want to give it away. Don't <laughs> give it away. <laughs> so these police officers are lined up. They're 10 feet apart and walking this field. And one officer yells out, I got her. They find Susan face down in the snow. She had been shot nine times. She had been raped. It actually looked like that Susan had tried to escape because she had been shot in the back. Oh, wow. They find 38 caliber casings at the scene. And when the autopsy is performed, the medical examiner finds that a bullet, that one of the bullets that pierced her heart actually had a long, dark hair on it. And what? that hair had also pierced her heart. Ew! I know. But, ugh. Right. But, oh, calling card, you know? I feel like this is a calling card, but is this person wrapping their hair around a bullet? I mean, maybe constantly shedding. I don't know. I don't know what's happening. I mean, I do shed a lot, but I don't stop to wrap it around things. I don't know. Maybe, I don't know. It's just odd. I mean, I do know. You know. I know. But I don't know. I don't. You don't know. You don't know, and I don't know. (laughs) That's right. Anyway, investigators start kind of scanning the area, and they come across a farm. They, they, there's a farm hand out, and they go and say, hey, did you hear anything? Did you see anything? He's like, yeah, I heard about six or seven gunshots. Oh. And they said, well, did you see anybody driving on the road before or after? And he said, yeah, after the shots, I saw my cousin oh. driving on the road. His name is Paul Ezra Rhodes. And what, what does Paul Ezra Rhodes' hair look like? Well, it's long. His long dark hair. Yeah. Let me just tell you about Paul Ezra Rhodes. He had he had a record in Idaho. He um, had a long, extensive relationship with drugs. But you're gonna really want to listen to this because you've never heard this before. You've uh-huh. never heard this before. I've never heard this before. Paul had been convicted of performing lewd acts on a mannequin Wait. At, on a mannequin at a lingerie shop. Good God almighty. Yes. I didn't even know that was against the law. Paul, <laughs> well, he had, broken, he had broken into the lingerie shop. Like, what, what is that in the penal code? Like, I, I do understand. not know, but you're not allowed yeah. to do that. I didn't know that was against the law. Yeah. Paul was found. Why did I get my own mannequin? <laughs> you can do that in your own home, maybe. Okay. Maybe you need to read the law. I don't. I, know that. I, I do live know that. in Idaho. They might have like mannequin protection laws there. They could. They they could very well because they found him having sexual relations 
with a scantily clad mannequin. Well, first and of once all, he was, how desperate can you be? You and idiot. once he was done with his sexual relations, he shot the ma- ma- the mannequin it, with a thirty eight caliber gun. What? Right. Maybe Paul was uh, practicing. I have no words for this <laughs> because I know. Who does that? Well, Paul does. Long, dark hair, Paul. Oh, my Lord. But, ew. What? I, ew. I Who is your mother? Oh, my gosh. Ew. Uh, yeah. No. And if I were that dude that was like, yeah, that was my cousin, I said, yeah, that used to be my cousin. We have disowned him because yeah. he weird. That's right. So, <sighs> because he had been arrested and he had a long history of crime, they had no problem getting his picture out. Of course. So they put his picture on every news outlet Good. they could possibly find Good. in Yo, Idaho. Weirdo. And it, not no, in, just what? Idaho, but like oh, all get over. Get yourself together, dude. I know. So a trucker calls in and says, I, I've seen him. I see him. He's here. I, he's here where I am. Are you at a mannequin store, sir? No. Get out. <laughs> no. He was in a parking lot, a truck stop in Nevada. He had seen this Tall, heavy set, long haired guy get out of a red minivan. He dropped something when he got out of the van, and the guy took off running. Oh my God. The police get there, there's no call, but there is a 38 caliber handgun on the ground by the minivan, which he had never even shut the door. It turns out it's his mama's minivan. He stole his mama's minivan. Oh, that is the least of her worries. <laughs> The least of her worries. She's going to have to go back and review what the friggin' hell happened yeah. in his childhood. <laughs> yeah. She's going to need a big review. Oh, Like, gosh. did I give him a doll? And did he, did I allow him to play with naked Barbies? Like, what's happening? Yeah. Yeah, it'd have to be way worse than naked bar- Barbies to get you to the point oh, where you want to have sex with a mannequin. I can't even grasp how to get over there like yeah. i'm starting with the naked barbie in the bathtub okay all kids do that my kid used to love to decapitate him he's fine no but i'm thinking this is but how like... do you get from there to having sex with them and then shooting them I, I just think that yeah i don't even want to know how to get there i don't want to know the mind of that killer i do not want to know i don't either that it's too much for me so, as they were looking at this crime scene, trying to figure out where the heck Paul went, they got another tip. And the, they find the guy, some of the guy said he's in this casino. You need to go get him. Oh, Lord, I hope there are no mannequins. <laughs> or, or you know, the women that, like, pose like the mannequins. Right. And then they oh just, my, like, oh weak my gosh, at you. Yes, because they have know? those, like, yes. in Vegas and stuff. Mama did that at, at the mall. That's right. She, she did that at the mall. People. Mm-hmm. Oh, so she Lord. was a live mannequin. Oh, God. Woo! Lord, why don't you live in Idaho? Ooey, ooey. Oh. <laughs> so Lord gross. have mercy. So police go to the casino. They find Paul and arrest him. This jackass had never changed his clothes, never changed his shoes. He's got blood on his clothes, blood on his boots. He's nasty. Blood on the mannequin. Blood everywhere. <laughs> they take a hair sample from him, and it matches the hair from the three crime scenes. Oh. The bullets from the handgun match the bullets used in all three murders. Oh. He has two packs of cigarettes in that his pocket. That he stole yeah. from the Hayden guy. Yep. Yeah. Nolan. Nolan. Yeah. Had and me. five lighters and a oh. wristwatch. The a wristwatch? The cigarettes and lighters were from Nolan's store. And the watch belonged to Stacy. Oh my God, he's wearing her watch. Yeah, that is so mean. I don't think he was wearing it. He had it in his. Oh, I thought like he was walking around like, huh? Check out my new watch. No, no, no. no. I feel a little bit better. He's probably trying to gift it to a mannequin. Maybe (laughs) it was like a proposal. Got you this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no. But he's taking shimmy out of this. That's how. Shimmy out of them bloomers. I done got you a watch. Right. So they take him in, he's he's arrested, they're asking him questions, they sit him in a room, they go down the list, okay, you're being charged for this murder and kidnapping and rape and this murder and kidnapping and rape and this murder and kidnapping. Yeah, because there was and, no rape on no one. Right. And he just looks at the investigator and he says, I did it. And then he puts his head down on the table and goes to sleep. Excuse me. That's it. That's it. He 
Night night. I did what? it. Night night. And I'm real tired. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah. my gosh. Uh, yeah. So he he pleads guilty. He um, does. He does. He pleads guilty to first degree murder and first degree kidnapping. So he don't try to get off on insanity. Um, his lawyers did try to the insanity thing, and it didn't work. Oh, okay. His lawyers actually tried everything in the imagine. world you can think of. But how old is this creep? Um, you know, I don't know. Well, that's... I think he was in his forties. I can. Find <gasps> out. I can find. Are out. you kidding? I'm thinking this is like a kid. No, he wasn't a Not kid. Not a kid, but I'm thinking like. 20s to early 30s at the most. Maybe he was 30s. Because um, they didn't really give a lot of information on the age. It, well, he was born in 1957. And when does this And this happen? happened in 87, so he was in his 30s. Okay. He was 30. Anyway, Paul is given life without parole for Nolan's murder. Okay. And he gets the death sentence for both oh. Stacy's murder and Susan's murder. That is great news. On November 17th, 2011, he was given some hot dogs with some sauerkraut, mustard ketchup, relish, baked beans, jello fruit salad, and strawberry ice cream cups for his last meal. Now, would that be your last meal? I ain't going out with the belly full of hot dogs and sauerkraut. That's time, making me gassy. At the time, they didn't get to choose. Oh. That's well, just, I like that. That's See, just I don't think they got. should get to choose. I think they that's should get a, frozen fish sticks and right. old tartar sauce and bologna sandwiches. Like, and barely cooked. Like, yeah. Not uh, all yeah. the way cooked yeah. stuff. And some gnarly molded corn or something. Right. Right, right. <sighs> so, and his... His legal team is has tried to get him a stay of execution. They have tried to say death by lethal injection is. It, are they done? They're done. Can you pull them? Yeah, I just don't. Death by le lethal injection is inhumane, as if he had been so humane. And yeah, exactly. What else did they say? I mean, they just, everything they could think of. Oh, I'm sure they, they pull, tried well, I mean, that's their job to pull out all the stops, but seriously, God, just, there's some times that you just want to say, stand down and let the guy Stand fry. down. Mr. Let the guy fry. Exactly. So, and they give, like, the, they, they ask the governor for a pardon. Governor, can well, you pardon? <laughs> it happened to be that when they asked for the pardon, the governor was in Hawaii on vacation. Oh, don't bother me. And I'm he doing said, the whole No. No, sorry. No. I cannot come back to sign that I'm paperwork. not doing that. No. So they gave him a really hard time about being on vacation for that. Why? Because so, he, he can't have a vacation. He's got to plan know. it around every guy that's going to be executed. People who were against the death penalty said that yeah, And if be, he had stayed in town for it, they'd have been mad at that, too. He should be more focused on more important things. But whatever. Okay. So on November the 18th, Paul was taken to a room where he is strapped to a table. He would lay there while his executioners prepared to inject him with chemicals that would end his existence. Okay. Families from Stacy's family, Nolan's family, and Susan's family were there watching. All right. His mother was there. Um, Paul apologized to Susan's husband for her murder, but claimed on his stretcher that he had nothing to do with Nolan or Stacy. And we know mother. that's a lie. He looked at their families and said, I don't know what to tell you. I can't help you. He's such a He con looked at his mother and he said goodbye. Bye mama. No, he just said goodbye. Oh. His final statement was to the warden and he said, I forgive you. I really do. And I just said, and I forgive you too. I'm jamming this needle and in your that, that was the end. He died. Wow. He was killed by lethal injection. November well, you know 18th, 2011. Whether you're for or against the death penalty, it's nice that we eradicated a piece of trash. Yeah. Because he treated those people like they were worthless. Yeah. He got a kick out of it. Yeah. And I think that especially in today's time, you know, um, 
we're so jaded yes. because we have all the shows that we watch on TV and all the different media that inundates us with violent images. Mm-hmm. But when you're talking about a rape of a person, of a, yes. uh, that is torture. Right. It is absolute torture. And it takes away, they're terrorized. Yes. They're, they're stripped of their dignity. Yes. And they, they, they beg for their lives. Absolutely. And he completely overpowers them and does lewd things to them that are not, that are not allowed without permission. No. And then uh, to top it all off as a thank you, I'm going to murder you, but I'm going to let you lay here and die. Right. And suffer. Right. I mean, I I don't know. I, I mean, I, I will just say right up front, I'm for the death penalty, and somebody please change my mind. Yeah, I know there are innocent people on death row. That system is broken. I hope that we continue to find justice for those people. Yeah. But the people that did it, they just don't need to breathe the same air. Yeah. That's yeah. my opinion. I know it's controversial, but... Well, in I a lot just, of states, I mean, this is one of the few that we've actually heard where they've not overturned the death penalty during the time the person is incarcerated, because that does happen a lot. You're given the death penalty, oh, yeah. but then a new government comes in, and they overturn the death penalty in that state, mm-hmm. and then they're not executed. They're just converted to life. And then the parole. question is, when the next governor comes in and reinstates the death penalty, those people don't get reinstated exactly. for the death penalty. That's they've right. been given pretty much a pardon. Right. So, anyway, that's his story. That is a crazy story. He is a piece of trash. He was Was a piece of trash. 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 And hopefully he is. We'll post his picture because he really just He's on a, hopefully he's on a slow roast down below. Yeah, and here's the weird thing. On Murderpedia, I I did find him on Murderpedia initially. And he actually had three other victims listed, but nowhere in any of the stuff that I read. Mm -hmm. Does it say anything about his conviction for any of those other murders? Oh, yeah, that's interesting. So, and they had, you know, the petitions for yeah. appeals and everything else on Murderpedia in there, but there nothing. was nothing about those other victims, so I'm not really sure. Then I searched um, by name some the three victims that I had through Google, and I got back a hit where they had done an episode of ID Discovery, um, what is that, Cold Killers, Ice Cold Killers, uh-huh. or whatever where they do it in the snow. In the snow, yeah. And this was on there. Oh, okay. The weird thing about it was the third victim, Susan, they called her Andrea. So I, it was very, I, I don't know what happened. How was she listed on your court documents? On the court documents, she's Susan. I wonder if like her name I was said. Susan Andrea, and she went by her middle name sometimes. I don't know. No, because they gave a different last name. Oh. Uh, it was, like, completely wrong. And I know some shows change They the did names, change it. But why but choose to change one name and not, not the either. other two? Because her family said we don't want it. Maybe. We don't want to participate. Maybe. That could very well be. Mm-hmm. That could very well be, but... Anyway, I thought it was an interesting story. Serial, serial killer in Idaho. Idaho. So your right muffins are you. smelling great. They're Why out. Don't we go on pause and we'll flip around and you can tell us a story. I will. I got a story. Okay. Come on now. All right. We're going to go on pause again. Okay. Bye now. We're back. And we're back. We're yes. Back. So um, while we were gone, we flipped around and got a little bit more comfortable. But I also want you to know that my sister is wearing her dog trout like a piece of clothing <laughs> so we've had a discussion about how she needs a dog carrier um we've got some friends that carry their dogs in a cute little carrier like a baby and she said no i don't want to carry a dog and i said but you're carrying it happened she said i don't want this to continue to happen and i said but it happens it has always <laughs> happened and the dog is seven or eight years old i don't think he's growing out of it anytime soon oh my gosh so this is it give into it sugar and get it i don't know i just don't know you need it because that way we don't go through all this crap i'm sorry especially if you twist him around and he's in the timeout position oh, right yeah and then he's not rewarded for his behavior by getting a good old snuggle well maybe santa claus will bring me one. Oh, i think santa claus will we'll be bringing see. me one <laughs> yeah it may not come directly to this address but it's going to be here oh my <laughs> all right so the muffins are out they look like they might be good but i will say that i didn't spray the pan 
So there may be an issue with getting them out. We'll let you know. But I will be upfront and honest. If I screwed it up, I'll let you know. Oh, and the, my apartment smells amazing. I love it. Love it. Amazing. Uh, amazing. All right. So talk murder to me, girl. Okay. So I found a murder. And it's it happened in Charleston. Oh, we Another live in Charleston. We do live here. Holy cow. Um, and it actually happened this year. No way. It happened in February of 2020. <gasps> yeah, so it's new. What? Yeah, it's new. And they solved it and all the all that jazz already? Mm -hmm. Go Charleston PD. Well, yeah. Yeah, that's true. Go y'all. Okay, so. This girl's name is Celia Sweeney. I love that name, I Celia. I love Celia, yeah. So she was born in Newport, Rhode Island. Oh. She spent most of her school age years through high school in a town called Skituet, I think. Oh. oh. In Massachusetts. It's outside of Boston. Gotcha. I'm sure I have mucked that one up. So <laughs> y'all let me know how you really say it. Um. So after high school and, and stuff, she eventually, her life path brought her to Charleston, South Carolina. Oh, nice. Yes. Um, she loved Charleston because it was, you know, we're, we're on the coast. Well, duh. It's and beautiful she, here. And she beautiful. wanted to stay on the coast. And she absolutely loved walking on the beach with her dog. Loved it. She nice. was, um, of course, she remained a true devoted fan of the Patriots. And she had a kitty cat and a dog, Aww. and she just had this really great life here. So um, she was dating a guy, and um, the guy that she was dating lived in Lexington, South Carolina. Okay. So um, I don't really know a lot about him, so I'm not going to talk about him. Okay. But I am going to talk about what happened on February 28th. Okay. 2020. So it, um, Celia... Hat. She's a social butterfly, that little girl, and just <laughs> gorgeous, just absolutely gorgeous. Um, she had gone out that night with some friends. She was seen at a bar, um, and she she frequented some bars often, so she was like a local in some of these bars. And So, so like the bars downtown? They didn't say gorgeous. where it okay. was, but it was a bar that she went to often, oh. so she was recognized. She was a regular, right. she was a okay. regular there, and right. so the bartender kind of recognized her and, and conversed with her and stuff like that. Gotcha. So um, the bartender says that she saw her and that um, Celia had told her it was late at night when they walked in. So Celia said, um, I brought some friends with me to try to get them out of my house because one of them is incredibly tox intoxicated oh. and I'm just trying to bring them out and then maybe shake them loose. Right. You know, <laughs> Good they're thinking. like the house guests that won't leave. Right. Right. So she's like, so I'm going to, I'm going to probably, she was completely sober. Right. But the guy that she, one of the guys that she was with was so intoxicated that they actually refused to serve him at the bar. Right. So, um, so they met up with another group of people. They're all socializing and stuff. And Celia just kind of slips out the side door, gets in her car and leaves. Right. Leaves these people. Right. That, that's probably smart. Yeah. She's trying to give them the shade. Yeah, yeah. So um, she leaves, but that's the last time she's ever seen a lot. Oh, no. So the next day, her boyfriend in Lexington is texting her, calling her, trying to get her on the phone. It's not like her to not respond and about half the day goes by and he's just like I don't know I'm really worried about her so he decides to get in his car and drive from Lexington South Carolina to Charleston and she um so he gets there and he goes straight to her apartment and he lets himself in I guess he had a key maybe probably so he lets himself in and what he sees is a horrific bloody mess oh no there's blood everywhere. Oh, no. Obviously, something bad had gone down. And there's a spent shell casing on the floor. Oh. And he's like, oh, my God, is this, like, what has happened? So he immediately calls the police. Yeah. The police come in, and they start to investigate, and they know something has gone down, right. and we need to find her. Right. So um, from what the officer said, that's when you see the crime scene, you know that this was fatal. Right. Yeah. With that much blood. Yeah. It was so much blood and the, the spent shell casing. And he said, you, somebody died in this apartment. There's no question. Right. And they died a horrific death. So they are frantic 
to find Celia. So they start talking to neighbors, things like that. They actually put out some missing posters of Celia. And a couple of the neighbors said that um, they knew they had seen her earlier in the day with some with some house guests, you know, some people right. that were yeah, over yeah. and stuff, and they were in the parking lot, and then they were back in the, her house and, you know, back and forth. And then they said um, they saw her car um, in the wee hours of the morning driving around the parking lot, which they thought it was weird. Like, like she was looking for a parking spot, but there were plenty of parking spots over there. Oh, yeah. So, um, and she had a, she had an Audi S5 convertible, so it was a well-known car. Yeah. You know, it was a car that, like, oh, it that's catches your eye, right. Yeah. yeah. So, and then they said, um, in the, in the earlier part of the day, they saw a, like a couple guys going in and out and back and forth. And then they saw her car drive off and a, a truck was following her. So they were like, we just assumed she left and, you know, was going somewhere. Right. So they're like, okay. So they end up finding her car at another apartment complex parked. Huh. And they're like, okay, something's not right. Well, if I'm not mistaken, where they found it was in um, Spartanburg. Okay. Okay. So now her car is in Spartanburg. That's not just a, that's not around the block from Charleston. No, no, it's a, it's a ways off. It's Still a ways. in South Carolina, but yeah, you know, it's not like 20 minutes So, away. And then they all start, also start trying to figure out who was she with? Like yeah. who were who, these people were these that people? she was with? So they decide that, um, they figure out that, that she was with two guys out of the three. They, they said two names. Um, one guy's name is Mark Dwayne Walton, and the other guy is Buddy Allen Carr. All right. Okay, these two guys. Um, Buddy Allen Carr is the one that was in, intoxicated, inebriated, like, couldn't be sure. Wasted. Awful. awful. Yeah, right. awful. Yes. So they start trying to track these guys down, and they actually find them in Inman, South Carolina. I don't know where Inman is. I don't either. I, I'm ashamed that I live in South Kakalaki, and I don't know the geographical layout of it. Right. And I should do better because we live here and we report a lot of stuff here. Yeah. So I'm going to get better about that. Yeah. But I don't know. I don't know where it is. And I'll also get better through you. Oh, yeah. I'll yeah. help you. Good job. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So they name, um, they name Buddy Carr and Walton as pers- people of interest in... Mark Dwayne. That's what that that makes that makes me laugh because it Mark sounds Twain. like Mark Twain, but it's Mark Dwayne. It's Mark Dwayne. That's probably Mark what Dwayne his parents Walton. were going for. Mm-hmm. So um, they name them as persons of interest mm-hmm. in her her disappearance. So um, they are tracking these two yahoos down, and they go to um, an apartment that these guys rent in Spartanburg. Oh. Oh. Okay. Okay. So they're at, so they go to their residence in Spartanburg and they knock on the door. They knock on the door, nobody answers, so they're they let themselves in. <laughs> what they find is Buddy Carr is dead from a self inflicted gunshot wound. Oh no. Yes. And so they also start looking around for any other evidence or whatever. Oh no. And what they find is a big old husky tote. Like a bin. Like a bin. Right. A big rubber bin. And when they look inside, there's the dead, bloody body of Celia. <gasps> Lord have mercy. So, it's it seems like we've got a... Murder-suicide. murder-suicide situation, oh, maybe. Oh, yeah. I might need to see where the other guy is, though. I agree. So, um... So what they do is they start going through the apartment. They start going through her apartment, and they find some bloody footprints. They they're definitely signs of a struggle at her apartment. Like I said, there was the um, single car cartridge. They also start um, canvassing the area, and they also look start looking for um, you know where where was where could this tote have come from? Mm-hmm. So they start looking around, and so. They actually figure out, they actually get surveillance tape of 
Carr and Walton together at a local department store in Charleston buying this top. <gasps> and what? it's hot. Oh, no. So, um, and this is the early the next day. Oh, wow. So, so they're guessing Celia died in Charleston in her apartment. Right. And then they put her in the tote and drove with her to their apartment in Spartanburg. Dang. Like, how weird is that? And then dumped her car along the way. Right. So, they're like, okay. So, then they're just like, okay, so what What does Walton have to do with this? Like, what is his, what's his angle? Right. Of course, he's saying, I didn't have anything to do with this. I left them after the night was over and I came home. But we saw you in the store buying a bin. He's saying, I, I don't know what you're talking about. Oh. I, that was for work or whatever. He had, he had an explanation for everything. Of course. So, um, originally what they come out with is that they charge him for um, tampering with evidence, which is the movement of the body. Okay. Okay, because that, that's considered tampering with, of evidence. And then the mis, mishandling of a dead body. Right. Because they packed her in a tote, which we're not supposed to be packed in no, a tote. That's and carted right. off to another place. Right. So, that's what they did. And so, they, they at least Which would buy them some time, right? Yeah. To figure it out. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, um, what ends up happening is they were able to say that the truck, the owner of the truck, remember there's truck involved, yeah. was Buddy Carr. So, he was the one driving the truck. Okay. But um, they figure out that Walton had driven her car. With the dead body in the tow. Nobody is, yeah, well, we don't know if that was in the back of the truck oh, or that was right. in the back of the car. Right, we don't right. know which one it was, but it doesn't matter because they're, they're working together. Right. So, um, and then they, the autopsy comes back and, and Celia had suffered significant blunt force trauma to her head. Um, and they, the autopsy said that would have resulted pretty much in her immediate death. Right. Because she was beaten so bad. So the, the spent casing was overkill. Right. On their part. So um, they also discovered um, when they found Carr, I'm trying to remember if where they, okay, no. In the bed of Carr's truck, mm -hmm. they found a claw hammer covered <gasps> in blood. Oh, gosh. Latex gloves. Concrete bags. Oh, my gosh. Camouflage nylon strips. So, it was a burial kit, pretty much. Yeah. For them. So, um, and they were able to link him to the purchase of every one of those items. And they had gotten it from two separate um, Home Depot trips. You can't buy stuff without people knowing now. Well, hello. There are cameras everywhere, everywhere. people. Don't be stupid. So, here's an idea. Stop freaking murdering people. Just... Just I stop. I, I, not, I would be so happy if, if we go, oh my gosh, no murders happened in 2020. Right. And so we can't, we're, we're only going to report on past murders. So please make that happen. Right. Because I would be so happy as yes. a podcast that, that talks about murder. Yeah. I'd be more than happy. Elated. Let's say 2021, no murders. None. None, zero. 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 How about we'll just try for the United States this 2021 and then 2022, we're going to travel the rest global. of the world. We'll go global. We're going to go global. Yeah, <laughs> but let's just stop freaking taking people's lives. Right. They're not yours to take. No. They're not yours to take. No. So they identified Carr on the Home Depot footage and then also Walton was right. on the. So they were going back and forth from Home Depot to her apartment and back to Home Depot and back to her apartment because they probably are not smart enough to tie their own shoe and they're trying to figure out how to get rid of a body. It sounds like it. Yeah. So they actually were able to arrest Walton on accessory after the fact. Okay. Okay. More, whatever you need to keep him in jail. Yes. So as of May of this year, now this happened in February. Right. May of this year, they have upgraded his charges to murder. Good deal. So, it has not gone to court yet, but he is arrested. He is in jail in Charleston County, but they haven't gone to trial, but they had enough evidence to say this is who did it. Now, he has not been proven innocent or guilty, so I can't say he's, he's innocent or guilty. I don't know, but he at least we know that 
he was there, he was there, and he participated in the transportation of her body. Mm -hmm. So, but I just felt like that was really interesting because, A, it happened here, and B, 2020 is a shit show. Yep. 2020 is a shit show. So, Buddy Carr solved most of the murder for us by killing himself. Right. Um, Walton is going to have to go to the stand trial. And we're going to see what happens when he stands trial. I can't find anywhere where um, the trial date has been set. Yeah, I think there have been a lot of delays because of COVID. Oh, yeah. A lot of court delays. I can't imagine what the court dockets look like now. Can you imagine? I can't. But the really sweet thing is that her parents, um, of course, had they had her body transported back up to Massachusetts. Mm-hmm. And she's buried in Massachusetts where they live. But... Um, the, the local newspaper there did the most beautiful article on her, and um, they covered they covered all of this from day one. So I thought it was really um, interesting that even though this all happened in Charleston, but because her parents were local to Massachusetts, that that paper picked it up immediately and covered every single day of her disappearance, finding her body, all the investigation, everything, they've covered it. From the get go, so and that's kind of how I found it. Was right. I was looking through some stuff from Boston, and then I was like, "This murder happened in Charleston." And I'm like, "Why are they, why are they covering up Charleston murder?" But right. that was why because she was from there, and that um, the people in that town are very, they're still very tied to what happened. Right. Yeah, I'm so, sure. Yeah. So that was my murder. It was a quick one because I'm a one-handed bandit. That's all right. <laughs> I always wanted to visit Boston. I did, I have to. Um, my daughter went there, and mm-hmm. she absolutely loved it. As a matter of fact, I thought she was going to move there for a minute. Oh, wow. But she, like I, I don't know that she absolutely has totally embraced the thought of winter. No. No, because, I mean, for, for instance, it was 43 degrees this morning when I woke up. Yeah. And I told my office mates via online, of course, um, that it was offensively cold. Offensively, offensively cold. Yeah. And so I don't think we're going to do well so, in Boston. No, I just was thinking I'd visit. Like I would love in to the visit. Spring, maybe. I would love the to spring. visit in the spring. Yeah. Yeah, I would love that. Or even in the fall. Uh, it might be too cold in the fall. Oh, that's <laughs> it true. Might it might be too cold in the too fall. Cold in the, that's true. That's very true. I know that. I know she had a really great time. She even went kayaking, like in the Boston Harbor or something. Oh, like, wow. She, yeah, and then she went to. Like downtown Boston, I don't know. She she just really had a great time. So. I like to listen to them talk. Oh, me too. I love a Boston accent. Mm-hmm. Love it. Yeah, I love them Wahlburgers. Oh yes. I mean, what are their names? Wahlburgs. Wahlburg. <laughs> Wahlburgs. <laughs> yeah, I would like to eat at the Wahlburgers in Boston. Yeah, that'd be fun. It would be fun. So I do. I enjoy that show. Yeah. So, Very cute. Yeah, so that's what happened to sweet little Celia Sweeney. She didn't deserve any of it. No. She was just trying to get them nasty old drunk men out of her apartment, and nobody knows why they did it. There's just no rhyme or reason as to why they did this. Right. She didn't even show signs of being sexually assaulted. Right. So I don't know what the frig. But, All right. Let's... But I will tell you that one of them, and I think it was Walton, but it could have been Carr, has a very long past history of being arrested for meth. Okay. So maybe somebody just wasn't in their right mind. Mm. Yeah. So, so there you go. Yeah, there you go. So can we put it on pause and you try to get a muffin? Yes, I can do we it. Can, um, see. We can taste a muffin and see how we do We can keep talking because we oh. have to talk about um, we some have social, social media. media. So you can brief them on social media. I shall brief them. Okay. So, we have social media. That social media is, we're on Instagram. Yes. And it's at murder, no. No. See, I'm confused, but it's because my arm is not cooperating. Okay, so. Your arm, does your arm move your mouth? It it actually helps feed my brain. (laughs) A lot of energy is going into healing right now. I understand. So, our Instagram is at Sugarcoated Murder. Come find us there. We're up to um, 740 followers. Holy cow. So come join the fun. Look at us. Yay. Yay. Um, Woo. That's right. Also, we have Facebook. We do. We have a Facebook fan page. And that Facebook fan page, you can find us by just putting into the Facebook search, Sugarcoated Murder fan page 
fan group page or something. Just sugar coated murder fans. Fan- <laughs> sugar coated <laughs> murder podcast. Oh, fan page. That's what it is. Sugar coated murder podcast fan page. And we also have a regular page if you don't, for some reason, want to be part of our 155 closest friends, which I don't know why you wouldn't want to be. You can just follow follow along on our regular page, which is the Sugar Coated Murder Podcast page. Right. And then we have email. We do, and we love to get emails. Oh, here's something to figure out how to email us. Give them a reason. Uh-huh. Ann and I are starting our Christmas card list. Oh, we are. And if you would like to get a Christmas card from Sugar Coated Murder Podcast, yes. that's Ann Barner and Karen Devaney, we will more than happily send you a Christmas card. Yeah. But in order to do that, you're going to need to email us your address. Yes. So, um, so yeah, that'd be great if you could do that. And Please. I'd like to just give a shout out to Annette, one of our fans. She emailed and requested a recipe. And it was for the tea she cakes. She wanted the tea cake recipe. I hope, and I Annette, sent that I hope to you're her. out there listening right this minute, and I hope that you're baking those tea cakes so yes. I can smell the nutmeg from here. Yes, That's and I hope nice. they turn out the best ever. Yes, and anytime you request uh, a recipe from us and you get it and you make it, please send us pictures because yep. we love to see what you guys come up with. Absolutely. Yes, but and give most us feedback. importantly, we appreciate you, Annette. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Annette, for reaching out and just sending us love. We yeah. appreciate it. Yes. So, anyway, email us at murder.sugarcoated at gmail.com. And, and tell us you want to be on the Christmas card list and give us your address. Yes. Or the address of your closest friend who's yes. also a fan. Or the address of your mother whom you listen with. Yeah, or send us your address book. We're good with that, too. <laughs> We'll send yes. your Christmas cards out for you. Oh, my gosh. Well, that's a service I am not providing because I don't think I'm going to be writing them out. No, no, no. It'll be the sugar-coated murder <laughs> Everybody Christmas gets card. One. And Everybody it'll be from you one. and I and whoever. Oh, there you right. go. Yes. Perfect. <laughs> yes. So, um, and so, and so. Oh, we have merchandise. We do. And we just, we just put out a brand new coffee mug design. And it on the front of it, it says... Just a couple of broads. Yes. And the back of it says, talking about murder. And yes. it's a really cute coffee Super mug. Cute. Y'all need them. I know. I keep, I don't know what I'm doing. Are you shaking your leg or something? No, I no. just, I think it's just. Something that's making our way. microphone bounce. Of bounce, 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 bounce. Weird things. <laughs> anyway, so um, we have merchandise. That's on Teespring. Spring. Teespring, yeah. We've, we've got, got a Teespring, and you type in "sugar coated murder pod pod store." It should come up with all of our listings, yeah, of all the stuff that we have, we have different on there. designs, I mean, and then you can get it and whatever. Yeah, we've got. We ordered a couple of um, doggy sweatshirts. Yes, for our dogs. So and we my dog will wait. probably wear it the two times it's really cold. Yeah, but it's okay. They're so cute. They are They're adorable. adorable, and they actually say "sugar coated murder barking team." Oh, yeah. And then, um, so find our merchandise yes. and find us on social media and yes. find us on email and be our friend. And we love y'all. We do. And we're gonna taste this uh, Ooh, this horny wait. muffin. Horny, horny. See honey. what it's all about. Horny, horny, horny. Taste it. Okay. Yeah. We'll right. Split it. I can't split it. Because I have one hand. Okay. Okay. There we go. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Mmm. Oh, that's nice. Oh, that is nice. Mm-hmm. That's very good. Just a little bit of light honey. It's not yeah, and it really is um, kind of a roll consistency. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, if we had the right amount of honey in it, it'd be more like a muffin. I understand, but, but this is perfect mm. substitution for cornbread if you don't like cornmeal, which yeah. I'm not a huge fan of. This is wonderful, guys. So you all definitely need to get the recipe and make them. They are great if you, you know, you can put in chocolate chips or you can put in whatever. Yeah. But they're a great little um, muffin to have around for Thanksgiving while people are, while you're cooking and people, you know, they're wanting something to eat. This is a perfect little Yes. And thank you. Thank you, Farmer Katie, for the honey. Mm Mm-hmm. We love. So check out Growing Minds. thank you, Farmer Katie's bees, for making the honey. That's right. Yeah. So Growing Minds, look look them up. Mm-hmm. They do um, really fun little goat tours, and 
It's just an, an incredible, an okay. incredible place. Sign up for a goat experience. It, yes. Oh, my gosh. Mm -hmm. And those goats are so freaking cute. Oh, yeah. Gosh, they have great personalities. We're big fans, and they're big fans of ours. They really are. Yeah, they except really for that Tina. She's kind of a little bit of an attitude. A little bit, but... But we're working on her. I love her. I love her, too. I she do. deserves to have an attitude. Yeah, and then she one more thing, gorgeous. and we'll we'll remind you of this and post a link. Our friend Andrea, who's done several podcasts with us, it's getting to be Christmas time, gift-giving season. You start to plan it out. She's doing gift certificates this year. Oh, well, that's wonderful, so you Andrea. Can get um, any kind of a gift certificate for any of for her services. Any of her services. Of, yeah. Uh, spiritual reading. Uh, there are all kinds of stuff. So we'll yes. post a link and you can go there and check that out. Absolutely. Um, and you don't have to be in the same room with Andrea to get yeah, a reading no, or get do it over Reiki. the phone. She can do it yeah. virtually over the phone. So yeah, you yeah. can be in Saskatchewan, Canada, if you want to be, and get a gift certificate and still get a reading from you Andrea. You sure can. So that's Absolutely. fancy. That's real fancy. Yes. Heart. All right. Well, I think we've covered everything. And then some. And then some. Y'all stay sweet. And don't murder. No, because if you kill people. We will talk about that. That's you. right. All right, y'all. Bye now. Bye. Bye. Thank you for listening to Believe. You can show support to your host by subscribing to the show and giving us a five-star rating on your preferred platform. Check us out at Believe.com and search for B-L-E-A-V on YouTube.